Ah, welcome back. It's Maximus here with you today. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you stopping by. We are once again talking about wheeled armoured fighting vehicles. Now, today I'm not going to get highly upset and triggered uh, by wheeled armoured fighting vehicles because you know my stance on them. Because this video really does um, annotate about a vehicle that's earned its place in the wheeled armoured fighting vehicle history books. Now, South Africa is a country which, unfortunately, I am quite ashamed to have not done enough video content on. And I'm going to change that for those South African viewers. I do apologize for that. The problem with um, some of your vehicles is it's very difficult to actually find uh, true accounts, true research, and video footage, and uh, good quality content to do videos on them. So I do apologize, but I'm going to change that uh, in the near future. And if any of you are... Uh, armored fighting vehicle users of the South African Armed Forces. I would really appreciate if you could get in contact with me so we can make some really good videos and showcase your country's armed forces uh, like they deserve. So today we are talking about the South African Rukat armored car fighting vehicle and what a piece of equipment this thing is. The one thing that really defines this vehicle for me is the fact that it's been purely designed within its own country. Its own specifically designed 76mm gun with its own fascinating armored piercing round uh, which is a fin round which really was uh, taking me off guard a little bit. I didn't really know that they would make uh, a 76mm fin round for a gun like this but I guess they do. So let's just get straight into it. South Africa had been fighting in the Angolan Bush War, aka the South African Border War from the mid-1960s to 1980s. The war set the requirement for some modern, more effective armoured fighting vehicles, which led to the indigenous development and production of such vehicles as the Caspier, Rattel, G6 Rhino 155mm artillery piece, which were all wheeled AFVs. South Africa had learned that wheeled AFVs were not susceptible to the sandy conditions, and, like track vehicles were, a lot more difficult to try and recover from sandy conditions. It meant that wheeled vehicles were more mobile and more ideally suited for dashing across the border to make strikes against the enemy. It also meant that vehicles could drive to their target areas rather than being delivered by transporters or railways like track vehicles are in European countries and North American countries. Landmines were a great concern to South Africa and it was found to be quicker and easier to replace a damaged wheel than it was to replace the entire damaged track. The development of the vehicle started during the 1980s as a replacement of the Aland Mark 7 armoured car and its design incorporated lessons from the South African Defence Force's border wars. First vehicles were developed in 1990 to the South African Defence Force and in total 250 were manufactured. The turret was manufactured by a South African firm known as Denel Ordnance and houses the Denel 76mm main gun. The decision to use the 76mm instead of the 105mm was because South African neighbours lacked any serious threats of armour that Denel's high quality munitions couldn't really penetrate, and also that the vehicle could carry more 76mm rounds than the 105mm rounds, increasing its overall capability to fight for longer. 48 76mm rounds are stored within the vehicle. The main gun can be elevated from minus 10 to plus 20 degrees. The gun can fire both armoured piercing, thin, stabilised discarding Sabo and high explosive fragmentation. The turret driver main gun stabilisation provides fire on the move capability and is all electric which reduces the vehicle's thermal signature and risk of crew injury if the armour is defeated compared to the hydraulic turret drives of other vehicles. The turret obviously has a full 360 degree traverse in a massive speed of 6 seconds for rotation. It has a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun for close encounters and a roof mounted 7.62mm machine gun for anti-aircraft capability. It carries 3,600 rounds of 7.62mm which means this vehicle is primarily designed to engage and stand off infantry or light armoured vehicles. The vehicle has a modern fire control system which includes a laser rangefinder and wind sensors. The gunner has a passive night day sight and the commander has a periscope day sight. He also has a raised cupola with a 360 degree vision around the vehicle. The vehicle is constructed of steel and offers protection against 23mm rounds. It has two times banks of four smoke grenade launchers on each side and also has a MBC system. Overall, the vehicle can range up to 1000km and a maximum road speed of 120km an hour, which is incredible. It can reach a gradient slope of up to 70% and maximum side slope of 30%. Its turning radius is 25 meters and can trench cross at 1 meter at 60km an hour. Overall guys, very impressive vehicle and this video I'm going to show you next is actually given by the manufacturer and showcases the vehicle a lot better than I could in terms of its overall features and performance and honestly I like to let vehicles like this be showcased in the old form of who actually produced the vehicle because they're always going to touch on things that I'm going to miss. So let's take a look at it shall we? D 
These critical properties have been designed into one fighting vehicle, the Roycut, a new concept in mobile warfare. The Roycut is built for fast penetrating actions, high mobility on roads and cross country, devastating firepower, advanced crew protection and combat reliability. A mobile and aggressive hunter by day or night, in adverse weather or extremes of climate. With a maximum road speed of 120 kilometers per hour and a fuel tank capacity providing an operating range of 1,000 kilometers, the vehicle has exceptional strategic mobility. The 1400 by 20 tires and independent suspension ensure excellent flotation on mud and soft ground and a smooth ride over rough terrain. The most advanced engineering techniques were applied in the design of this vehicle. cut was due to a specific need for a highly mobile fighting vehicle for the demanding requisites of present-day high mobility warfare. Drive from the 420 kilowatt water-cooled diesel engine is transferred through an automatic six-speed gearbox via internally mounted differentials and drive shafts to the road wheels. Average speeds of 50 kilometers per hour can be attained over rough terrain where 8x8 drive can be selected with a choice of differential locks on all wheels. Maximum gradients of 70% can be achieved. Trenches of 1 meter wide are no obstacle, even at more than 60 kilometers per hour. The vehicle can cross 2 meter wide trenches and do 1 meter vertical climbs at crawl speeds. The design of the hull gives the crew excellent protection against strikes from medium caliber weapons up to 23 millimeters and even landmines. The wheels are fitted with run flat elements which enable the vehicle to travel at 30 kilometers per hour for up to 50 kilometers with any number of flat tires. Even with the complete loss of two wheels on the same side, the vehicle is still sufficiently mobile to reach a safe area. Its maximum road speed of 120 kilometers per hour is achieved on tarred surfaces. But even dirt roads can be negotiated at high speed due to the vehicle's excellent traction and stability. Cohesionless soft sand is negotiated with ease. The main weapon is a 76 mm stabilized gun, which allows stationary as well as on-the-move firing. The use of a very advanced optical sight and digital fire control system gives a high first-round hit probability for distances up to 3 kilometers. A complete range of passive night sighting equipment and a dual-purpose white light and infrared searchlight ensures an effective night fighting capability. The 76 mm ammunition range includes a specially designed armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sabot round. A high explosive round is used against personnel and soft targets. A total of 48 rounds is carried, of which 9 are ready rounds.
secondary weapons consist of a 7.62 mm coaxially mounted machine gun as well as an externally mounted general purpose machine gun of the same caliber. Eight smoke grenade launchers are fitted to throw a smoke screen when an unexpected enemy is encountered. To supplement this already useful facility, an exhaust type smoke generator is also fitted. This very efficient device is sufficient to confuse and distract enemy fire and makes the Roycut a very difficult target to engage. The low profile of the vehicle makes it easy to camouflage and its tremendous firepower makes it one of the best offensive weapons in its class in the world today. The crew consists of four men. A driver, the loader, sits to the left of the main gun where he has easy access to the ammunition, the gunner with all his controls within easy reach and the commander who has full overriding control of the gun. Reliability is obtained through a rugged design, extensive logistic support, ease of maintenance and combat proven experience in the design of military vehicles. A measure of South Africa's self-sufficiency is to be found in the fact that the Roycut enjoys a local content in the region of 90%. No less than 160 different organizations utilizing some 700 specialist personnel were involved in the research and development of the vehicle. Three different prototypes were built for evaluation by the South African Defence Force. The six-wheeler and the eight-wheel tank versions were not progressed further as they did not meet operational requirements. The eight-wheel version, however, which was deemed to satisfy strategic and tactical needs, was then developed further. The platform was manufactured by Ermitech, with their main supplier being Sandok Ostrol. The locally manufactured gearboxes in the engine, which are fitted to the vehicle, are yet further examples of the precision engineering techniques which have made the Republic one of the leading industrialized nations of the Southern Hemisphere. The turret is fitted by LEW, with ESD as subcontractors for the integrated fire control system, which is one of the most advanced electronic systems ever to be built in this country. While Eloptro are responsible for providing all the optical equipment. From the weapon control system, sophisticated sighting and night firing equipment, to the main weapon itself, the stamp of South African engineering excellence and pride are evident. To ensure absolute reliability and durability of the finished product, exhaustive testing of components, systems and assemblies designed to simulate actual operating conditions are performed at each stage of manufacture. NASCAM manufacture the complete range of ammunition and Genen provide full test and qualification facilities for the entire system. With its superior design, unsurpassed mobility, devastating firepower, excellent crew protection, and proven reliability, the Roycut is an aggressive day and night fighter, uniquely suited for the challenges of the 21st century. So there you have it, the Rokat. Uh, quite an interesting little vehicle. Uh, for the most part, I think it's very, very applicable for South African needs. Of course, having those wheels and being able to shuttle across landscapes very, very quickly makes a lot of sense. Inherently, South Africa does have a very sparse, wide, open landscape. Track vehicles do not do well in the powdery sand, desert-like conditions that South Africa has. And trust me, I know firsthand of how that kind of talcum powder, almost, sand content can ruin tracked vehicles.
These vehicles being in wheeled configurations really does make a lot of sense for South Africa, being able to cross those borders, similar to the border wars that they were going through, uh, putting some firepower down range and getting back out of there. Now the interesting decision that was made to retreat back from the 105mm uh, commitment gun was quite fascinating to me for the fact that yes there are no neighboring countries that have a vehicle that could um, require extra penetration but I always look at things as why don't you go the little bit extra uh, don't stick to just on that borderline of yes we're covered but what if something else comes up and I honestly feel they should have done a 50 50 mix maybe even like a, a, a I don't know, a 70-30 mix. 70% 70 of the vehicles had the 76mm and 30% were given the 105 just in case you wanted to pack that little bit more punch. Now the 76mm gun is very very capable of being able to engage soft skin vehicles, uh, ground troops, all that good stuff. But uh, I really do feel that the 105mm in a high explosive fragmentation warhead is going to do so much more damage to bunkers, in-depth firing positions, um, trenches. We're seeing ammunition that's programmable now, uh, for instance, overhead burst, all that sort of stuff, that I think they could capitalize on this vehicle a lot more than uh, they did. But there is an upgraded model with the turret housing, the 105mm rifled main gun, capable of firing all the NATO rounds that developed between 1990 and 1994. Uh, it has been you know, purchased by South Africa, but not by other nations. So it looks like, you know, they did eventually make the decision to, hold on a second, we've got this 76, let's punch it up, let's get a bigger bigger gun in there, um, and maybe even 120 millimeter one day, who knows? But overall, folks, very capable vehicle. I love the fact this thing can go just about anywhere. Um, I'm a very big biased track fan, but I do love the wheeled vehicles that have strong capabilities too. And in overall terms for South Africa, it makes complete sense. Uh, you want to have a vehicle that can get across terrain extremely quickly and even the obstacles that they come across i mean we're looking at trench crossings here they have no real problems at all with doing that um so good for south africa and overall i'm really impressed with the fact that they produce most of it themselves something i wish my country would do more of uh, we did the recent video of the lav 3 which if you haven't gone to see please go check it out but wheel vehicles really are starting to come a lot more apparent than tracked are and that's just a fact of the matter is they're cheaper, they're going to get on the battlefield quicker, and they do have a little bit more capability than track vehicles do. However, I will always stick to my track vehicles when it comes to capability on a muddy European tank versus tank battlefield. But, you know, that's just not what South Africa is requiring, and I'm just really happy that they picked a vehicle that's, that's useful for them. Plenty more reviews coming up for South Africa, folks. I apologize again for not doing more reviews of these vehicles. And uh, stand by for more uh, reviews in the near future. Probably the next one I will do on South Africa, South Africa sorry, is the G6 artillery piece. Uh, definitely something I've been very interested to do some research on. So stand by for that. Folks, if you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate you leaving me a like. Let me know in the comment section of any upcoming military equipment videos that you want me to do. You know, firearms, tanks, vehicles. Um, I'll definitely look into them and uh, you know if you want to support my channel I would really really appreciate you checking out my patreon account the link is in the description box below and if you want to just come have a chat with me hang out even play some video games uh, come check out my discord channel it is also in the link uh, box below and uh, I'll see you again next time all the best and bye bye